Okay, um, the wild goose Qigong tradition is about a thousand years old. The great master Yang Mei Jun, who first started teaching wild goose Qigong publicly in about 1978, um, uh, succinctly described wild goose Qigong as arms making circles in the air while weight is continuously shifting in the soles of the feet. So we're using the circular movements of the arms because the circular movements like to spread out to the whole body and facilitate that shifting of weight either from back of the feet towards front of the feet or when the arms are alternating from left foot to right foot. And what we're doing with this basically is we're giving the body a chance to relax one part of the time. So when my weight is on one part of the body, here on my right leg, the other side of the body as a moment when it can relax. Same thing when we're shifting front and back, weights on the more on the front of the body, the back of the body can relax. Weights more on the back of the body, front of the body can relax. So I'm going to demonstrate the qigongs that We've been working on in a six weeks Santa Fe College community education class. This one's called Heaven and Earth. So here we're rubbing all the way around the waist. The hands meet in back and meet in front. One more time, heaven and earth. Next one is called Row the Boat. The image of uh, standing up and sitting down can help you let the weight of the body shift naturally from front of the feet to back of the feet. So here, this would be the idea of standing up, legs are straight, your awareness is more forward, and here it's like you're about to start to sit down, the knees bending, and your awareness more toward the back. And we do the same movement, but in the other direction, Call it knead the dough. I'm going to do it a few 
few more times uh, without accent, or what we call without accent. So here, you notice that the movement is pretty steady, pretty smooth. The rate of movement of the hands in the circle is pretty steady. And now I'm going to add a little accent, in this case, right as the elbows are straightening, cocking the wrist. So you can see that that gives a little pulse to the movement. to playing with the chi ball. So transitioning, I turn the palms facing another, one another. I'm carrying a ball of chi. And then I start rolling the ball. One palm continues to face the other palm. Just like you were holding a a large beach ball or exercise ball, the palms would be on the surface of the ball. And now the weight of my body is naturally shifting, not front and back, but side to side, from the left foot to the right foot. Back and forth. And you can feel it, how easy it is to relax this side of the body, but this side of the body is holding up all the weight. I find this direction to be the most comfortable, but I also do it in the other direction. So this is the backwards direction, I call it, and change it. This is the forward direction. directions again. Anytime with playing with the chi ball, you can let the ball get big, as big as you want. Or you can play with a much smaller ball. The more relaxed your hands are, the more you can feel the ball. So with a big chi ball, we can start to transition. This is one way to get into the next qigong, which is rejuvenation. So we have a big chi ball and we bring it so that one hand is going down behind the body while the other hand is going up in front of the body. And the way I, I'm moving now, notice the back of the hand, I mean the, the hand in back, the palm is facing the back of the body, the hand in front, the palm is facing the front of the body. And if you pay attention, you may be able to the connection between the palms right through the body. It should not be 
any more difficult with the body in between the two palms. Then to start doing rejuvenation, we just make one little change. We, as the hand is moving around behind the back, we turn it so the back of the hand is resting on the back. And we just rub the back of the hand down the back of the body. Hand in front, the palm is facing the body, coming up in front, the hand in back, rubbing lightly down the back. It's the batty or unweighted side of the body. So my weight's on my right leg, the hand going down, the, the left hand going down on the empty left side of the body. So rejuvenation, one hand coming up in front while the other one goes down in back. We're going down the unweighted or empty side of the body. Okay. And we use this closing movement, we call it return of chi. Doesn't have to be a closing movement, you could just do this repeating on its own, that's fine. Okay, so in, in this uh, Santa Fe Community Ed class, we worked on two selections from Wild Goose Qigong. Uh, the other exercises I've been doing are uh, based on or compatible with Wild Goose, but they're not straight out of Wild Goose Qigong, whereas the next two sequences I do are selections from Wild Goose Qigong. So this is the opening sequence from Wild Goose first 64 movements.
now demonstrate uh, a sequence called uh, Stretching with Ease. It comes from Wild Goose, Spiral, and Tripod Qigong, which we also call Wild Goose 4 because that was usually the fourth form that, um, to which uh, Yang Mei Jun introduced her students uh, in China in the 1980s and 1990s. So that one we, we pivot and do the same movement to the four directions. Uh, keep in mind that all the postures are what we call empty step postures. So the foot that steps out front, uh, the leading foot remains uh, unweighted or empty. So this whole time the weights back here on the back leg, in this case the right leg. Turning, so now I shift all the weight to the left leg and the right leg is here. So that whole sequence is empty step postures, uh, which uh, for one thing are important because that helps us start to relax the front of the body. Um, all right, now I will introduce, or I'll demonstrate uh, sweeping the six meridians. So we're doing a sweeping movement following the pathway of the six main meridians in the hands and arms. So there are three meridians closer to this surface of the arm, the in surface of the arm, and there are three meridians closer to this surface of the arms, the yang surface of the arms. And so this is the back side of the arm. This is through the body to the back of the body, down the back of the body, and then it connects between the legs up the front of the body. So the meridians connect to the tips of the fingers and go in connecting to internal organs.
and in this case we're using the there's one meridian going down the back of the body that accesses the energy of all the all the yang meridians so it's down the back of the body and then there's another meridian coming up the front of the body that accesses the energy of all the in meridians. So when we talk about sweeping the six meridians, we're talking about the six hand related, hand and arm related meridians. This one's very good also uh, doing it uh, seated in a chair. Actually, most of the exercises that we did in this class, the Santa Fe class, um, are suitable to do seated in a chair. And then we can include the main meridians in the legs. So we're going down the back at the lower back. It splits into two and it goes out to both legs. So we're going down to the feet and coming back to the torso. So now we're sweeping along the six foot related meridians also. So we just call this sweeping the 12 meridians. So each time we go down the back, we connect to both legs, sweep along both legs, and then one hand invites the chi up the front of the body and to the other arm. So we're not asking ourselves to follow any particular pattern of inhaling and exhaling uh, with these movements, with any of these movements in this class. Just relax and breathe naturally. Okay, I'm going to go back to uh, sweeping the six meridians. However, sometimes if you want to, you can, for a little while, consciously um, think about breathing in a certain pattern. And in this case, you can try this one. So whenever you're sweeping away from the body, toward the fingertips, exhale. Returning to the torso, inhale, going down, exhale, coming up, inhale, exhale, breathing in, coming back, breathing out, going down, breathing in, coming up, out, in, and so on. You don't ever have to practice it that way with that particular breathing pattern. Um, 
However, that's an option to do sometimes. Okay. And I'm going to demonstrate uh, a simplified version of a Qigong called Swimming Dragon. And I'll first do it with the feet about hip width or maybe a little wider apart. So we're working with three levels, throat level, waist level, knee level, or down toward the knees. And then we go back up. So the tips of the fingers are together if possible and the heels of the palms or the heels of the hands are together. Coming in pretty close to the body. So I do it for a little while on one side and coming across up here, I just change direction. So now the back and forth movement is in the other direction. I do it, it feels more comfortable for me when I have the, the feet apart like this. Notice that the weight of my body is following the direction of the hand. So my hand's now moving from right to left, my weight has moved to the left. My hand's now moving toward the right, my right, the weight moves toward the right. And now I'm going to change directions and have the feet and the knees together or, and for me when the feet and knees are together I like it where the body moves away from the hands or in the opposite direction of the hands. And the other direction. And I just close it out like this. Stretch up a little bit, palms together, and then come straight down, forehead, chest, lower belly. And we did 
one other walking movement. Uh, we call this Nourish the Yin Walk. So, we're stepping out with one foot, and the opposite hand comes in front of the body, the hand of the same side goes in back of the body. This is an empty step, so the weight's on the back leg, but in this case, the front toe is up. And then we shift forward, relaxing the arm. And then lifting up, up, up. The front foot comes up even with, I mean, the back foot comes up even with the front foot. And then we do the other side. So it's a slow, calm, very deliberate walk. how the stepping or the shifting of weight and the moving of the arms all happens together. Lifting up, lifting up, lifting up. Finally, the back foot comes up. the in walking. Now I'll demonstrate three um, sitting exercises we did, three sitting qigongs. Um, ideally I would have something between me and the ground, but since today it's not, uh, the ground isn't very cold or damp, so uh, I think I'm all right sitting right on the ground. Normally, especially uh, now in the cool time of the year, you would want something between you and the ground. Okay, this one's called C-Sway. You're leaning forward, and I feel like this should be done with uh, you, you hold, you don't hold the head up like that, but you don't let it hang all the way down like that either. It's kind of extending out straight ahead. And then you make a circle with the torso and the head. Also notice when I'm back here, I think you should do it again with the, the head extending straight up from the torso. And I think about wanting the back of my neck to be long. So rather than letting my head fall back like that, I am 
holding it up some. I'm not way like that. I'm not back like that. I'm kind of in between. Think of that long, extended back of the neck. And of course, uh, do it in both directions. Go around a few times one way, or several times one way, and then go the other way. Alternate, do it as long as you want. If I'm doing these sitting exercises, I like to close it out using this hand position called golden light. The left hand is outside of the right hand and the thumbs at about belly button. Next one we call airplane. Uh, this sitting, we don't want anyone to be uncomfortable. So um, if your knees start feeling stiff after doing this for a few minutes, you know, take a little break, stretch out, massage your knees a little bit, move them around. You don't want to be uncomfortable. Um, it works fine for me to, to sit flat on the ground or, or on the floor, but for a lot of people, it would be much more comfortable if you have a block or a, a thick pad or something under your sit bones so that the, the, where you're sitting is raised up a little bit. Um, so it's perfectly all right to do that. Don't feel like you have to be sitting uh, at the, with your sit bones right at the level of the floor or the ground. Um, okay, this one's called airplane. So I'll just lean forward a little bit. And then... Notice the turning of the wrists. And I suggest that um, it doesn't feel uncomfortable that you also practice uh, airplane like this. Um, just gives a little bit different stretch that we're not getting in the, in the uh, sitting cross-legged posture. Any of this, if it feels uncomfortable, or if you feel like you're straining, don't. That defeats the whole purpose. You wanna, yeah, you want to stretch a little bit. You want to challenge yourself a little bit, but you don't want to be uncomfortable. You don't want to strain. You want your breathing to be relaxed. You don't want to be holding your breath. When you start straining and holding your breath and you could hurt yourself. All of these are very safe, very balanced. 
but if you start trying to make it be something that is not, it's possible to pull a muscle or do whatever. Just take it easy. more sitting movement. Uh, we call it tracing the meridians. So you have the soles of the feet together if possible and then you kind of open the feet looking forward and then close the feet looking downward. If you're loosened up enough or flexible enough, you can bring your forehead to touch the feet. If that's not straining. So we open and close the feet two or three times and then rubbing or tracing up the inside of the legs, up the front of the body. Down the back and down the outsides of the leg. start tracing down the legs, I point the toes. Sometimes you can observe your breathing. Just be aware of when you're breathing in. And when you're breathing out. or all the time you're not trying to follow any particular breathing pattern in coordination with the movement. You just start to notice, you start to be able to be aware of when you're breathing in and when you're breathing in.
sitting in this position is uncomfortable for you, don't do it. You can uh, try to adapt these sitting exercises to sitting in a chair, or just do the other exercises. Don't force any of these. Just do what you're ready for in the way that you're ready for. Okay. And to be a little more lively, we included the opening sequence from Wild Goose Soft Palms Qigong. Uh, also, we also call that Wild Goose 5. Um, it can be done very briskly. And it goes like this. So as a for fun, I'm just going to do it in the four directions. Since that turns me 90 degrees, I'm just going to keep going. Maybe go a little bit faster each time. This one is a empty step posture, empty step here. So hands come up as the foot goes out. We're still empty step, still empty step, still empty step, still empty step. All on the back foot. Then swing to the right, swing to the left, swing to the right, swing to the left, step and turn, down. Up, back to the center, out. Back to the center, out. Okay.